In this guided tour, I'm going to walk you through an overview of SDCOM's all-in-one takeoff and estimating system. We'll demonstrate how to manage your bid pipeline, upload drawings, perform a takeoff, build an estimate, and lastly, create a customer-facing quote. When you first log on, you'll land on your project dashboard, which gives you a 30,000-foot view of your bid pipeline organized by project stage. So for example, estimating, bid submitted, accepted, and work in progress. You can move projects by simply drag and dropping them into the various stages. You'll notice that as you move your bids, the estimated construction value for the stage increases and decreases appropriately. To the right of the projects, you can see the assigned estimator, due date, and project value. Here you can easily sort and filter by any of these values making organizing your bid pipeline and collaborating with fellow project team members easier than ever before. Let's drill into this commercial construction project to begin the estimating process. In this section, you'll enter the project name, description, due date, customer, and other relevant details. To the right, we have a few places to track important project notes, tasks, and upload ancillary documents like specifications. You can easily collaborate with team members by adding notes and at mentioning a team member to begin a conversation at the project level. Next, let's click the Plans tab where our drawings are stored. These can be PDF or image files, and after uploading, STCOM breaks the entire plan set into individual sheets, making it easy to rename and organize into folders by version or division. You can view the drawings in Grid or List View, and you can rotate or delete any unwanted sheets. Additionally, you can search for plans by name and text-based content located within the drawing set. For example, I can search for any sheets that contain a certain key note and group those together in a folder to simplify the takeoff process later on. Let's go ahead and move over to the takeoff screen and begin the quantity takeoff process. On the takeoff screen, you'll see the first drawing in the set you can pan the screen by single clicking and holding and moving the screen around to a desired location. Now you can also zoom in and out using your mouse wheel or with the navigation controls at the bottom of the screen. At the top of the screen, you have a navigating control to move between sheets using a left and right arrow, as well as a drop down that lists the plans by name to make it simple to locate a desired sheet. We'll first want to set a plan scale. You can do that here, and we'll use a standard 1 quarter inch equals a foot from our list of common architectural and civil scales. Now that our scale is set, let's start a takeoff by selecting one of the pre-built parts and assemblies. SDCOM includes many out-of-the-box parts and assemblies for common trades that you can search for and use while performing a takeoff, allowing you to estimate the project labor, costs, and materials as you perform a takeoff. You can upload your own database or add one-off items by simply typing the name of an item and adjusting your labor and material pricing on the later estimating steps. In our example, we'll start with the already created 12-foot wall takeoff for paint and texture, which uses a simple linear measurement with a height variable that we can adjust to get our square foot coverage area. Begin by clicking the takeoff name. You'll first notice the mouse cursor turns to a crosshair. And we'll single click at our starting point to begin our measurement and trace our way along the wall using single clicks to turn and double clicks to stop the measurement. You can then single click to begin measuring again. If you make a mistake, you can always hit the backspace key to back off one segment at a time to make corrections. Now that we've got our linear measurements, let's adjust the height to get the square foot coverage area. In this example, the walls are 12 foot tall, so we'll add 12 feet here, and just like that, we have our coverage area. Let's do a quick takeoff on the flooring to get a measurement for stained concrete. Just like linear, you'll use a single click to begin the measurement and single clicks to make turns. You can hold down the shift key to maintain straight lines and turn on 45s and 90s. And once again, you'll double click to end the measurement. Now you can adjust the depth of the takeoff to get cubic yards or feet if applicable. 
Now I'm going to navigate over to the electrical lighting plan and count our lighting fixtures for the project. Once again, we will click the name of the takeoff and start by manually counting a few fixtures. You can do this by hovering your mouse over a desired item and clicking to highlight and count the item. In this example, there are quite a few light fixtures and other items to count, so I'm going to leverage our auto count feature which will automatically count a selected item across multiple plans. You can do this by clicking auto count and then drawing a rectangle around the desired item and telling the application what sheets you would like to search. I'm going to only search the current plan for this example and click start. Give it a few seconds to run and it will return your results. Now you can browse through and select and deselect any items that are applicable and click save and close. Another great time saver is the plan comparison tool. This allows you to overlay a revised plan on top of an existing plan to see what is different. Anything that's been removed will show up as red and any additions are in green. This makes estimating revisions simple and improves the accuracy and speed of your takeoff. We can now click swap plan to move the takeoffs over to the new plan set. We can now use the multi-select tool to delete the two lights that were moved from the new set of plans. In addition to the multi-select tool that we've used throughout the demonstration, you have several other markup tools including the ability to cloud and annotate on the drawing, rulers, line, and arc tools, and you can even add collaborative notes and tasks on the drawings. You can always download or email your marked up plans right from within the application. Let's move to the estimating tab and figure out our estimated cost for the project. Here we have all of our takeoffs and quantities along with item costs and labor rate in orange with their extensions to the right and in black. You can adjust any number in orange and the extensions update automatically. In addition to adjusting the quantities, item price and labor, you can drag and drop the takeoffs into groups and add additional items directly from your database or even create non-database items. Below the takeoffs we have our summary section where the project costs are summarized and broken out by cost type. So for example, labor, material, and equipment. Here you can see the total labor hours and our variable composite crew rate with burden that we can adjust on a per project basis. This hourly rate is a crew average that is multiplied by the hours to give us an estimated project labor cost. To the right of the cost breakouts, we can add project markup or margin depending on your company's preferences. To the right, you can see the project costs and profits and below the totals. In the next section, you can include additional adjustments like overhead, taxes, and bonding. In many cases, a company might desire the option to add waste, labor difficulty, and even the ability to adjust the labor and material markups on a per line basis. This can be done by entering power user mode, which is in the top right hand corner. As you can see, we now have many more options to adjust costs on the project on an item by item basis. Let's scroll down and adjust the profit markup on this item to 15%, and down below, Take a look at how it affects the overall project profit. As you can see, there's now a blended average for the project. Since we have our numbers adjusted, let's double check our inclusions and exclusions under the project notes. This is where you can add a scope of work statement, inclusions, exclusions, and project notes like billing terms. Now let's click show bid to review the customer facing quote. Here you can see your logo, customer details, and the project broken out with as much or as little detail as you like with options like lump sum or a more detailed pricing breakout. You can download the bid to PDF, Word, or email directly to your customer from within the application. Now once we receive a project award, we are now ready to move our project over to Procore to manage the course of construction. Click the three dots in the top right hand corner and select export to Procore. Confirm you want to send the primary estimate over and that you want to lock the project budget. Once in Procore, we can see all the details set up during estimating, like project name, description, customer details. Now let's take a quick look at the project budget. Here you can see the estimated budget broken out by cost code and cost type. 
This will serve as the foundation to creating our prime contract and schedule values, saving time and avoiding any duplicate data entry. Mm -hmm.